Okay, of examples one and two involve uh, converting from polar to rectangular form, which is this down here. We'll call this the easy way. And then we're going to uh, convert from uh, rectangular to polar form. That's a little bit more challenging. Uh, that's going to be a lesson down the road. I want to say lesson 59 if I can't, if I remember right. I think that's right. I think it might be. Yep, yeah, good. Okay. All right, anyway. Polar coordinates describe a vector by length r and angle it creates counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Okay, what this means, use some real language here, five at an angle of 53.13 degrees means that the vector length is five. Okay, this little arrow, this half arrow means it's not going on forever, it just stops right there. And its angle created, the zero degrees is right here, and we always go counterclockwise. So we measure a degree from zero to 360 counterclockwise, 0 to 90 is here, um, 90 to 280 is right here, from 180 to 270 is here, and then 270, 360 is there. I figure out the shirt and um, break my arm trying to teach math today. All right, anyway, so if it's 53.13 degrees, it just measures up from 0 counterclockwise 53.13 degrees. All right? If I was looking at the vector, let's say 2 at an angle of 117 degrees, then if I were to draw that vector, pretend it has a half arrow on it, um, 117 degrees. So there's two, right? That's at zero. Now it's at 90. 117 is going to be about this far. So what would the five be then? Two. Oops. Two. How long it is? Angle 117. Five, how long it is? Angle fifty three point one degrees. Okay. So, uh, those are polar uh, coordinates for a vector. Now, we also have what's called rectangular coordinates, which tells you how to get to the same ending point. Okay. So, consider the vector's endpoints right here. Right. If I'm at five angle fifty three point one three, that's where the endpoint is for that vector. Polar, rectangle coordinates tell me how to get to that same point horizontally and vertically. The horizontal vector is the i vector, so 3i, and the vertical vector is the j vector, 4j. Now, just recently we dealt with the letter i to represent imaginary numbers, right? Yeah. This i is not the same as that i. Okay? i is a unit vector in the horizontal positive direction. j is a unit vector in the vertical positive direction. Why are, the, why are the arrows both? Because they're vectors. Oh, Anytime okay. you write a vector, you put the little arrow over it. Okay. So this arrow got a little bow. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I and J with little arrows over top of them. That distinguishes the I imaginary from the I vector. Okay, and also we can make our little I vector, I imaginary, a little fancier I, the I vector, we can make like this, this kind of I. Just I'll make it a, a distinction in your brain about between the two things. They're not the same. All right, so all I'm doing with rectangular form is telling myself um, horizontally, vertically, how far do I go? Positive 3, positive 4 means go right 3 up 4. If it was negative 3, I plus 4, J, now I'm going 3 to the left and 4 up, okay? So the signs in front of these, if I got a negative in front of I, I'm going left. I got a negative in front of J, I'm going down. Positive in front of I, right. Positive in front of J, up, okay? And all we have to do to convert from polar to rectangular form, they're going to give me this. They're going to give me the magnitude, which is r, and the angle, which is theta. I'm looking for the h and the v, so we're trying to convert to h i plus v j. All right? h is r cosine of theta, and v is r sine of theta. The two numbers they're going to give me, I just have to use my calculator to evaluate. Keep in mind your calculator must be set to degrees, not radians. These are not difficult. These are very, very easy, all right? Uh, so let me just quickly convert mine. I have my calculus from earlier. And uh, set my mode. Currently, I'm in radians. i got to switch to degrees. Okay? As long as you're in degrees and your calculator is turned on, you should be able to get these right. So change four angle 57 degrees to rectangular coordinates. So again, my polar form tells me that r is equal to 4. 
and theta is equal to 57 degrees. What does R stand for? R is the length of the vector, okay. and theta is the angle it creates from the positive x-axis counterclockwise um, around the unit circle. Um, real quick, theta is a Greek letter. Uh, at this moment in time, almost always angles are referred to using Greek letters. To draw a theta, it's very simple. You draw a zero and put a belt on it. That's all theta is. Some other popular Greek letters that happen are alpha, which is a fish, <laughs> beta, which is a fancy B, gamma, which looks like a Y. All right. Uh, let's see, there's mu, mu. Well, sigma. I don't think they ever use omega. Uh, no, not omega, but if they did omega, there's a capital omega. It's kind of a fancy one. You might have seen this one before. They don't usually represent um, angles using pi, though, because that might be confusing. But um, these are the ones that are used most often when we're referring to angles, these Greek letters. They're just letters. Okay, uh, it's basically we have lots of alphabets in the world, and um, what mathematicians figured out was if they use the same types of letters to represent things, then other mathematicians can look at their work and know when they see this stuff, oh, they must be referring to angles, because that's what they usually represent angles with is Greek letters. So don't get uh, thrown out of proportion here with, with Greek letters, they're just letters. All right, so all I got to do is convert to rectangle coordinate something i plus something j. That's all I got to do. And the something in front of I, let's put a red line here, the something in front of I, we're calling it H, is R, which is 4, cosine of theta, which is 57 degrees. And then we have V, which goes in front of J, and V is simply R, which is 4, times the sine of theta, which is 57 degrees. The two numbers you need to know are the two numbers that are in this polar form. Can you go, what was H, H equal? Something I plus something J, H and V are the somethings in front of the I and the J, okay? And polar form is R and theta, okay? So, the two numbers we need are going to be given to us. If it says convert this polar form to rectangular form, the polar form gives you the two numbers you need, then you use your calculator to evaluate. So, if I type in 4 cosine 57, in parentheses equals, and I type in 4 sine 57 in parentheses equals, I get 2.18 for H. And I get positive 3.35 for J. Yeah. Right. If you'd like to see proof as to why that's right, I, I'm here to offer proof any time possible. That's what I'm all about is proving things. I love it. I'm a mathematician, so. My fancy ruler out. Fancy, right? I'm going to put that right at zero, right? And let's use, let's use inches. See this right here? It tells, it tells me the angle. I'm looking for a 57 degree angle. There we go, 57 degree angle. Oops, try again, 57 degrees. Put that right there, there's zero, right? So if I draw this vector right here, yep. that would be forward at an angle of 57 degrees, right? All right, what I got for an answer was 2.18 to the right, 1, 2 point, uh oh, oh, I just have the inches though, sorry, I gotta get my ruler back out, I'll tell you what, 2.18 inches to the right, so 2, 0.18, that's 0.2-ish, right? That's 0.25, so probably about here. Ballpark. Yeah. She used, she used um, centimeters to yeah. tell yeah. live and learn. Okay, and then if I go vertically, supposed to go, is it 3.35, right? Yep. Looking promising right now. Go green. 
3.35. So there's 3. 0.25 and a little bit more is 0.35. Boom. Wow. They're the same, right? Wow. It's amazing. All right. So there you go. Christmas. It's kind of Christmas, isn't it? 2.18 <laughs> to the right and 3.35 up is equivalent to having a length of 4 and being at an angle of 57 degrees. All right. So that's basically all we're doing is we're converting from one structure to another structure, and that's how we do it. There's your magic formula. That's all there is to it. And this video took about 15 minutes to do something that's going to take you about 25 seconds. But anyway, watch, watch it if you're tired and not quite tired enough to go to sleep. They probably won't do the trick.